Hi, in this example problem from chapter 10, we'll see how to solve a problem when you have both gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy due to a spring. Pause for a moment and read the problem. All right, so we've got a, a before and an after of a gymnast who starts up in the air at a height h above a platform and afterwards falls down and compresses the spring of the platform by a distance d. We're going to use mechanical energy and conservation mechanical energy to solve for this problem here. So let's see what do we need to keep in our term for mechanical energy. We're going to have elastic and gravitational potential energy, so we need both these terms. We're going to have translational kinetic energy. We do not have rotational kinetic energy. So we'll have three terms. This is the initial situation here in, in uh, figure A, and this is the final situation here in figure B. And so we're going to go ahead and relate Emac initial equals Emac final. And again, we said that we have PE for the spring, PE for gravity, these are both initial, and we've got translational kinetic energy. And we've got the same two things for the final situation as well. And uh, so what we need to do is go ahead and set up for each of these guys uh, what do we know here? Remember that uh, your kinetic energy, one half m v squared, potential energy due to gravity, is equal to uh, m g h, and potential energy due to the spring, the elastic potential energy, is equal to one half k x squared. Your book uses for potential energy gravity. They call it a g. PE for the elastic potential energy. They call it E, PE. I don't use those terms, but you can see what they mean. So we're going to want to go ahead and identify these different things here, right? The speed, the uh, spring energy, and the uh, gravitational potential energy, right? So let's go ahead and make some axes for these. So I'm going to go ahead and let this be my axis for gravitational potential energy. I'm going to call this the y-axis that goes up, and uh, I can also make another axis for the uh, spring. I guess I'll call this x for spring. And uh, for the spring, you have no choice of where the zero position's got to be. It's got to be when the spring is at its equilibrium position. So here's the equilibrium position. The spring is in equilibrium when it's at this length. And so this is going to be our origin, x equals 0 for the spring. Now for height, I'm going to choose the same value as my origin for height, because that way I can relate x and y easily. So this is the origin for height, y equals 0, and it's a good choice to do. Now we can go ahead and figure out in the beginning for the height. This is where we're measuring from the feet. So here's your h initial, and we know that that is equal to uh, h, which is 2 meters above zero. And uh, we've got, for the uh, initial value for the uh, spring, well, it is uh, at equilibrium to begin with. So x initial is the equilibrium value for the spring. In fact, that is to say the spring is not compressed in the beginning. Now for the final position, we can see that uh, for the uh, location of the spring, it's compressed by an amount x final. It's equal to some number, we don't know what it is, I'm going to call it minus d because it's below zero and it has a, d a length of d here. And for uh, gravity, it's going to be the same thing. Gravity h final, it's going to be also minus d. And what we're trying to do for, in this case, is figure out what is the maximum distance she compresses the spring. We are looking for d here. You see it shows up in a couple places. 
Uh, and we also want to look and see what the speeds are, right? In the beginning, the speed is zero, and at the end, the maximum distance that she compresses it, that means that she comes to rest momentarily when it's compressed to its maximum amount. And so we've got some things there. Now we can go ahead and cancel out all the terms that have zero. For the uh, kinetic energy, let's look at the uh, initial and final are both zero. So that is zero. That is zero. For the uh, elastic potential energy, the initial uh, position is zero, an unstretched spring. And so this is zero. And uh, I think that's all we can cancel out. But that's helped. Let's go plug in our, our uh, equations now. So PEG initial, that means, right, MG H initial. That's going to be equal to PE elastic final, one half K X final squared plus PEG final, MG H final. And let's plug in our numbers here. So we've got MG H initial is 2 meters. We've got K. Uh, let's see, we know what K is, right? I'll plug those numbers in next. X final, that's going to be minus D squared plus MG. And H final is minus D as well. And let's plug in the numbers that we have here. So we've got the mass, 50 kilograms. multiplied by g, 9.8 meters per second squared, multiplied by 2 meters on the left-hand side, and then we've got k, which is equal to 8,000 newtons per meter. And then we have that is over a 2, and we're multiplying by d minus d squared. That removes the negative sign, and we're just going to have a d squared here left. And over here we've got a negative sign, and then we get the mass, 50 kilograms. We've got G, 9.8 meters per second squared, and we've got D. So we can clean this up a little bit just by uh, calculating some of these values. And let me pause this and go ahead and write those down. So this is what it looks like when we calculate all the numerical values. And notice what kind of equation do we have here? It's a quadratic equation and the variable is d. So we're going to have to solve this as a quadratic equation, right? You're going to want to go ahead and write this out in its standard form. So to do that, we got to get this set equal to 0. So let's go subtract 980 from both sides. And we're going to get 4,000 newtons per meter times d squared plus negative 490 newtons times d plus negative 980 joules. And so we go ahead and look at this, and uh, we identify this as your A, your B, and your C. We need to just go ahead and plug all this information into the quadratic equation and see what the answers are for D. So here's the quadratic equation, and let's plug our numbers in. So we've plugged in all our numbers here, and uh, let's go ahead and see what these come out to. So I get two values for D. I get a negative 0 0.4375, and I get a positive 0 0.56. Now, based on the uh, picture, we know that D was a positive number the way we defined it. So it can't be this answer. And uh, it's got to be this one. So at the end of the day, and that's meters here, D is equal to 0 0.56 meters. And we can even see, just by looking at the unit here, newtons, newtons per meter, a newton divided by a Newton per meter, well, that cancels out the Newtons, and the 1 over meters in the bottom becomes a meter, and so yeah, we do get the units that we want.